Got a product information card, battery. Great. There we go. All right, so we have here the Lilied S110 12.8 volt 110 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, this battery's been sitting here for about a week or two now as I was trying to figure out whether or not I actually wanted to do a review of it. Uh, the company did ship this out to me for the purpose of a review, however it arrived damaged. There's a very large crack going across the top of the battery. It's probably about 6 to 8 inches in size. Additionally, the top of the battery is rather scuffed up and looks like it may have been used before. So, But this is the box the battery's packed in and you can see somebody actually put packaging tape over where the hole was that was punched in this box and damaged the battery. Now, this box was shipped to me in a larger plain brown box. So I don't believe it to be shipping damage because that outer box was not damaged. Uh, so that tells me somewhere along the line somebody knew that this battery was damaged and they taped it up and sent it along anyway. So as such, because it's not shipping damage, I'm going to go ahead and review this battery as is. In addition to the fact it's got some interesting properties I'd like to talk about and take a look at. So this battery is advertised as a starting battery, particularly for marine use. Now it can be used pretty much anywhere. It's a standard lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery. However, what makes this battery a little bit unique compared to some of the others I reviewed is that this has a very high surge rating of up to 800 amps for starting things like an engine. Now typically when we talk about lithium iron phosphate batteries as a starting battery, they're smaller motorcycle type batteries or for like lawn tractors or things like that. And uh, what those do is those actually bypass the BMS. So the BMS has no control over turning those starting batteries on and off. But according to the data I've read from this battery, the battery actually goes through the BMS. So this must be a very powerful BMS to allow 800 amps of surge current uh, for starting an engine like whether it be a truck, a car, or a marine vessel. So in addition to the usual capacity test, I also want to hook this up to my truck, my diesel pickup truck, and see if it will start that as well. 110 amp hours and 1,350 watt hours. Additionally, we see this carries an IP67 rating, which means it's somewhat waterproof for a little bit. So we've also got two sets of terminals here. It looks like there are two negative and two positive. Just want to check if these are electrically connected here. 0 0.2 ohms there, 0 0.2 ohms there. So it'll be interesting to see if these terminals are actually connected together in parallel or if these are going to separate parts of the BMS. I'm not sure why there are four terminals here. So for the posts here, on the negative side, we have 16.12 millimeters, uh, and on the positive side, we have 18 millimeters. Uh, so the positive slide is slightly larger than the negative side. Each post is also threaded, so you can put a screw or a stud down in there. However, this battery came with absolutely no hardware. So I did discover that this is an M6 thread. So I'm able to use and thread down the same studs that I was using for my E battery bank, which is good. So here we can see some of the technical data for the battery. Of most importance is the charge voltage, which is 14.6 volts. That calculates out to the standard 3.65 volts per cell. And we can see the standard charge is 22 amps, which is around a 0.2 C rate. Same with the discharge. We have a standard discharge of 100 amps, or slightly under 1 C, and a crank or surge discharge of 800 amps. And we're good from anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 cycles, depending on your use of the battery. So now I'm charging it up with my iCharger X6, configured for 14.6 volts, and I'm going to leave this run until the BMS of the battery shuts off the charging, which according to specification should occur at 15.6 volts or 3.9 volts per cell. 3.9 volts is quite a bit high on a lithium iron phosphate battery. All right, so this charger just shut off one minute and 16 seconds into the test, and it wasn't even at 14.6 volts, so. So that means either the BMS is configured differently than what's on the specification sheet here, or this battery is very out of balance and one of the cells is at 3.9 volts. So let's run our capacity test and we'll see what the result is and go from there. And according to our specifications, the low cutoff is 8 volts or 2 volts per cell. Alright, so I've just got a couple of incandescent and fluorescent lamps plugged into this inverter I'll use for a load. Should give me right around a 0.2C rate for the discharge test. And this battery is going through a batrium shunt, which is metering the amount of amp hours being discharged. And on the display here we can see the current voltage, amperage wattage, amp hours, and watt hours. Like I said, this battery was charged up until it disconnected, and then lithium iron phosphate settles a bit, so it is not showing 14 plus volts. Um, but it is full charged according to this BMS. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the inverter on. And we're discharging at 225 watts, which is less than a 0.2C rate. 
So I'm going to go try to find another lamp or two that I can plug in here. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to leave this run until this battery BMS shuts down or this inverter disconnects and then we'll see what our measured capacity is. All right, so the BMS shut it off around 9.85 volts, which was slightly higher than the 8 volt as listed on the uh, specification sheet there. And we tested it at 107 amp hours, which is 3 amp hours short of its rating. And I have to wonder if maybe these cells in here are just out of balance based on how it shut down the top end of charge as well. All right, so for opening this thing up, I see there are two Allen screws on the bottom and there are two at the top, so four total. All right, so here we get our first look on the inside. As we can see, both sets of terminals on the top are connected in parallel, so there is no difference between those two sets of terminals. And we can see we have two uh, seven gauge wires. These are silicone insulated wires with a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. Um, I would have preferred to see a pair of these or something thicker. Looking at the BMS here, there is some information etched into it. I see 4S 12 volt, 150 amp. Uh, so that's good to see that the rating on the BMS does exceed the continuous rating of the battery. 3.9 volts is a little bit odd. So I see discharge voltage is 2.1 plus or minus 50 millivolts. So that is higher than what the voltage on the spec sheet is. And here's the terminal for the balance leads which actually fell off when I removed the top of the battery. So it's sitting down in there. That's not a problem. And I don't know what happened to this battery, but something pretty big must have hit it because it bent this piece of metal this is a piece of metal that is supporting the BMS, the plastic lid on the top here, and you can see how it's bent and deformed. I did notice too that there is a gasket going around the lid of this battery, which is good since this is somewhat waterproof or water resistant. Uh, it's IP67 rating. Taking a look at the inside of this battery, we can see they are lithium iron phosphate aluminum case prismatic batteries, as we would have expected. There's this uh, metal bar going over the top of them that is supposed to be holding them down. And I see the left side, you can see how loose it is. It's not even secured down in there, and the left side is bent. Additionally, this negative conductor is cut through like it's been pinched. That's a lot of exposed wire there to be flopping around with exposed metal terminals in here. All right, so here's the retaining bracket that was holding that in. You can see the left side here. They do have a fair amount of insulation. There's some tape. I don't know what that is, fiberglass or something there, but... Uh, you can see on the left side how this bracket is bent and it looks like this uh, screw plate or whatever you call the end has pulled out of and broken from the plastic. And there's where that bracket connects to down in there that is broken. Alright, so build quality of the actual battery looks pretty good. The cells are flat, they're not bulged or anything like that. They don't look damaged. Um, they've got uh, this thick piece of foam here protecting the balance leads where they're coming out down and around. Uh, batteries are all nicely lined up here. They are spaced in between with some thinner padding. It's not as thick as the side here, but it is uh, keeping them about, I don't know, a couple of millimeters apart there. The terminals are held on by little tiny screws, and it looks like they were laser welded after the fact. So perhaps those screws were just to hold the battery into place. Um, but they are laser welded, and the laser welding looks pretty good, so I don't have any complaints there. Uh, the cable connections, the nut is part of this bracket they have welded on. There's one bolt going through the lug into that nut. There is no washer or lock washer. The individual balance leads are connected to the smaller screws. They are nice, decent sized wire. They are heat shrinked with nice ring terminals on the end. The cells do also have their original QR code intact. It doesn't identify what type of cell they are though or the capacity, unfortunately. All right guys, uh, I did a little bit of research online and I am fairly confident, about 95% confident that uh, these are actually EVE 105 amp hour batteries. Because the QR code begins with a 02Y, which is a brand identifier for EVE, and the format also matches the QR format in some of their other data sheets. Now EVE does not make a 110 amp hour battery. They make a 105 amp hour battery. Um, I did find some 110 amp hour batteries on Alibaba, uh, particularly the cattle cells, but they had a very different terminal. And when I look up the EVE 105 amp hour cells, Everything matches. The QR code formatting matches. The QR location matches. The terminal colors, the size, the shape, the vent, everything matches uh, for what these should be. So, you know, I can say with a fair amount of confidence that this manufacturer is branding these 105 amp hour batteries as 110 amp hours. And that's just not acceptable. That being said, these are good cells. I mean, these are great. EVE cells are great, and these cells tested above what the cells rated capacity is. 
they just did not meet the actual battery packs rated capacity but you know this battery sells for one thousand dollars now you can go out and buy an SOK battery with much better quality for a little over half of that cost this is advertised as a starting battery and it's it's targeting the higher current draw applications and this is just a standard lithium iron phosphate battery it's there's something special about it the data sheet for these EVE cells specifies a maximum discharge of 3C which would be around what 315 amps not anywhere near 800 now I have no doubt that these cells can probably push 800 amps in a surge or starting application uh, but that certainly is not good for the cells uh, and those cells are technically not rated for that so what we have here is some great cells put in probably one of the cheapest battery enclosures I've seen with very poor craftsmanship it didn't even include hardware they shipped it to me damaged the wiring is is damaged the wiring is nicked there's exposed conductor here uh, this battery actually has no low temperature cutoff at all so it has high temp cutoff but no low temp cutoff you know the list just goes on and on as to why I'm dissatisfied with this so yeah guys I'm sorry to say but I definitely would not purchase this battery I know I said I was going to do some additional testing like trying to start my pickup truck and whatnot but uh, I really just don't want to spend any more time on this at this point. So, But if you got this far, feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.